All right, everyone, so welcome to our YouTube Masterclass. We're here to support you in planning digital first events. And this is one of the many classes um, we'll bring when, well, this is one of the many classes we'll bring to you across the next few weeks. And today's class is focused with just the basics on learning how to set up a channel, upload videos, and engage your audiences in your life. So this, today's session is geared particularly towards all those uh, we have don't really have experience on YouTube before. And we're just going to cover the basic aspects of YouTube just so that you're familiar with the format and the way our platform does business. So I have a humble request for everyone. Um, if you're in the Hangouts meeting right now, uh, can I kindly request for everyone to mute um, their chat? Uh, that's because if, let's say, and we have about 250 participants, if anyone individual were to keep their chat unmuted, it caused a lot of echo, a lot of noise, a lot of disruption to this presentation. So if you have any um, questions, you can always ask the questions in our chat. And at the end of this session, we will have 10 minutes dedicated for Q&A, just to answer some of your burning questions about YouTube. Hope that works for everyone. Yeah, so mute yourself to prevent echo and disable your camera. Um, but we prefer to see you. This is because many of us may not have very stable internet connections. And we want to make sure that this meeting can be as stable, as stable for everyone as possible. Right. So there's one more person who needs to join this meeting. Yeah, so chat with each other, ask questions. And <laughs> So remember to pin my presentation to enlarge the presentation on the screen, because at many points in time, um, some individuals may end up speaking, and that could unpin the presentation I have today. So find the pin icon on the presentation I have right now and pin it to your screen, just to make sure that it doesn't get disrupted by another person that's speaking. So can I kindly request everyone to mute all of their own windows right now? And we're about to start. I can just confirm if everyone can see my presentation. Yeah. So today we'll start with YouTube basics. We'll cover content strategy 101 for 15 minutes, and we'll cover YouTube operations 101. This mostly concerns on how to up what concerns concepts on how to upload a YouTube video, um, how to design your title, your descriptions, how to end screens, what do they do for you, what are different things to consider, and how to use uh, YouTube analytics. We we'll also give a very brief overview of other YouTube features. We we'll have separate sessions and the coming weeks to cover different features like live streaming or other burning questions you might have. So feel free to let us know what you want next for our YouTube Masterclass. So today we're covering the basics and we'll be starting um, right about now. Gina, we good to go. Seems like we have some final few participants joining this call. Okay. Yeah. Is it better? Is it better? Is there still noise coming from the headset? All right. Okay, let's start this presentation. So today we'll cover five key factors. Why YouTube, building your channel 101 content strategy, uploading best practices and assessing your performance. So on to the very first factor, why YouTube? YouTube's the largest video network right now in the world, and YouTube search is actually the second largest search engine behind Google search. Many people come to YouTube just to find information or to find self-help videos or to find um, new content to consume. 
and it's become the number one uh, destination with over 2 billion monthly logged in users. So we have these users that watch a billion hours of video every day and video remains the world's largest pastime. So especially in today's climate and when everyone's stuck at home and everyone's working from home, uh, we have a situation where most of our, the video consumption will continue to grow and globally video may be 82% of all consumer traffic by 2021. So many of our consumers also say they've discovered new products and brands on YouTube, making it an attractive platform. Sorry, I believe someone else may have taken over a presentation. Um, can everyone still see my presentation? Okay, good. So um, this makes it a very attractive platform, not just for users, but also for many advertisers worldwide. So the way YouTube works is that we need to maintain a platform that caters to all audiences with different content types and categories, allowing advertisers to reach all the different audience from all walks of life. And this allows us to maintain this balance where not only do we have partners providing a wealth of content, attracting global users from all around the world of all age groups, uh, we have a platform that, that is also financially sustainable for a lot of our creators. So building your channel 101, so if you don't already have a YouTube channel, um, what you could do is you just go to YouTube and create or sign in with your business or corporate email account. Try not to use a personal account because that may sometimes cause problems for your organization, especially if you work in like a media broadcast company when it comes to channel recovery. So in many of our, in many of the, uh, the partners we work with, we see that um, there, are, there are many examples where employees may leave the company and it becomes very difficult to try and recover channel access. So to avoid um, some of these problems, it could be easier for many of the, um, the partners that work with us if many of the channels are created and tagged to a corporate email. So follow the prompts uh, that come like uh, when uh, that, that pop up when you when it, when you go to the to the the icon and you create a new channel and just need to fill out the necessary fields of your information. So one very important thing to understand about creating a new account is that most of the accounts that are created today um, are created for brand account. So under this system, which is uh, as opposed to the old system, this allows for a particular corporate email to be able to um, create multiple channels and create multiple brand accounts with channels attached to them. So under this system, you can go to your brand account, which is a Google account. So, sorry, someone's saying that they cannot see the slide. Um, if you look at the different participants, you have to click on the top right corner to all the participants. You have to put my presentation. Um, So look for Eric Tan and look for uh, for the presentation within the list and pin my presentation to, to the screen. Okay. So under this new system, we can have uh, we can have multiple channel managers that can be added or removed to manage any single YouTube channel. So if, let's say you have a team and you have some employees who leave that team. Um, you can always remove the employer as a channel manager. This allows you to be able to, to exercise greater control over your channel access and account access because one of the one of the latest issues we've seen is that many of the companies end up losing access to their channels and this is one way to be able to prevent that. Yeah. So what should you think about when you first start building a YouTube channel? So the, so what you need to basically start looking for is look for inspiration. So you have to you, you have to sort of know what you're going for when you're creating a new YouTube channel. Are you going to create a channel that caters to gaming audiences or the audiences looking to uh, how to how to cook um, prep meals online and looking to audiences who are looking for reviews and, and assessments on what is the best technological product to buy or to do comparisons between different vehicles and latest models online. So many of the content verticals on YouTube also include uh, beauty and fashion, gaming, food, how-to, auto vehicles, and, and even news. And, it, and what's also important is to try and under, understand what the best practices are for your category and for the audiences you're trying to appeal to. 
So you can ask yourself these questions when viewing um, many of these channels, like ask yourself what type of content on this channel uh, is on this channel that you could leverage on your, for your business? And what kinds of audiences do these channels um, aim to reach? So what I'm going to do, because I think there are many people who cannot see my presentation right now, is I'm going to try and present my, my presentation again so that everyone can have the opportunity to pin it to the screen. So when my presentation comes up, uh, I'll need to just pin that presentation to the screen to, to let the presentation stay on the, on the, on the presentation. Right. So I'm presenting my slides again. Okay, take this opportunity to pin my presentation to the screen right now. Look for the pin icon on the presentation that's in front of you and pin it to the screen. Right. Can everyone see my presentation now? All right, thank you. Okay. So you build a YouTube channel. Um, so let's, we've gone through two things, right? One, um, we've, uh, we've thought about what the value proposition of our, of our channel is. And two, We've thought of, uh, so we, we've, and, and two, we've looked for best practices on YouTube on, on what many of these like uh, channels within those different channel categories are doing. Um, so how do you introduce your channel to your viewers? So on YouTube, we have a very unique format where we allow our, where we allow our channel owners to, to, to be able to deliver a channel trailer to all new audiences and all new, um, uh, users who visit our website uh, to visit the channel page. So when they land on the channel page, they have the opportunity to view a channel trailer for all the users who are not yet subscribed to that channel. And you can also structure your channel page such that you can determine what appears at the top of your channel. So what you can see here, uh, this playlist looking um, rectangle, it's called a, a channel section. So what you can do on your channel is you can go to your channel homepage, and you can edit in, in real time the different sections that will appear on your homepage. So let's say there's a new topical issue coming up within your market. You can essentially go ahead and switch the ch channel sections up and down to make sure that, let's say, oh, the new Southeast Asia games appear right at the top of your channel homepage. So channel sections and channel trailers give an opportunity to tell new users what your channel is about, whether you're covering the latest trends, or whether you feature your core, your, or whether you want to feature your core content. So these channel sections can be edited day by day and allows you to, to help you present your and, and put your best foot forward and helps audiences to know what exactly your channel stands for. So how so what we also allow you to do on, on YouTube is that we allow the opportunity to brand your own channel as well. So what most people see when they first land on your channel homepage is that they see your channel banner, your channel icon, and your name. So all these different uh, sections on your channel are fully customizable. You can give yourself a unique channel name. You can update the channel banner and channel icon every single day. If let's say you have a different series you're covering or different series they're launching, you can also change that channel banner to reflect the different kind, the different new kinds of content you're experimenting on, and let's say if you've rebranded your your channel, your, your channel, or your brand, you can go ahead and change that channel logo to reflect the new corporate branding uh, of your of your YouTube channel. So we come to content strategy one hundred and one, right? So. Um, earlier, some, some of you guys said that you guys missed step one. That's okay. Um, we are actually here to discuss some of different channel content strategies that do work on YouTube. So um, what we mentioned earlier is that when you create a channel, you need to be able to know um, who do you want to feature in your video. You need to be able to know what your target audiences are and who you're trying to appeal to. You need to be able to know what stories you want to tell and decide how best to capture the sights and sounds of video. Is it going to be professionally produced? Is it going to be captured on a mobile device? Is it going to be a vertical video? Or is it going to be like a live conferencing format? So 
So what you can do once you have uh, done some ideation and content strategy and thought about who your target audiences are, which content category do you want to produce content in? Um, we covered the different categories, including food, um, automobile reviews, um, fashion and beauty, and help content. And what you can do is you can go on YouTube and search on different YouTube search queries to, to see other channels that have done really well in those content categories and find best practices there and try to think about what have they done well, what can I emulate, and what should I not emulate. So what sometimes uh, we find that's really different about YouTube versus normal video production is that we see that often videos on TV and then and, and video stories that are about an hour long often build up to a climax and big review around the 30 minute mark of a 50 minute video. So when you, when, you watch, when you watch Netflix, when you have a captive audience that's dedicated to watching that one full episode on Netflix, there's a lot of work that, that builds uh, the lead in, gives some clues of what's going to happen, to build up the suspense. And the middle of the episode, you realize, oh, um, so-and-so person has betrayed their mother-in-law. Um, however, on YouTube, due to the nature of audiences, audiences are always choosing between the, the broad range of content that exists on YouTube. Often what we see works on YouTube is to start with a different kind of story arc, an emerging story arc. So it usually starts on a high note where, or where you see it, some of your most popular YouTube creators start with teasing the highlight of the video. So today I'm going to tell you about, uh, about a new conspiracy when it comes to uh, this new series of, uh, of, of Disney movies, this new Star Wars, Star Wars movie. Um, what, what is the conspiracy behind that? There's a, there's a hidden theory behind that. So it starts with a high note and it starts with branding cues. And then they start with the lead in again and introduce some unexpected plot points. And, they, and every step of the way, and every minute, and every two minutes, they give the users a, a nugget of information, something to cling onto, and something to anticipate, and something to be entertained with. So what we see often works on YouTube is that it's, if within the two, first two minutes, or the first two to three minutes, the, audiences is not, the audience is not engaged, we find that audiences may end up leaving the video and dropping off on the video and moving to different content or different content for uh, different videos within the same content category. So when it comes to thinking about content on YouTube, it's always good to think about how the video content can start on a high note um, before introducing like the, the different plot points or to, uh, introducing the lead in and building up the story again. So many of the successful videos optimize for retaining audiences within the first two minutes, they optimize for that initial buy-in, and then they build the story from that point onward, just to ensure that the audiences remain interested in the video, and they'll watch the video to the end, let's say to the 10 minute mark, or the seven minute mark, or the 15 minute mark. So that's one of the interesting aspects of YouTube that you should probably take note. Um, although this doesn't always work for every single channel, but just giving you some examples, just so that um, uh, we can all start to distinguish the, diff the, core, the different elements that make like digital vi first videos work. So here are, some three core, here are the three core concepts behind content on YouTube. And that's because uh, users on YouTube, so we talk about how users are always searching for relevant content. They're always trying to um, browse to discover an inspiring and new, a new and inspiring content. And, but what we often see on YouTube is that users will often revisit their favorite creators of channels where a lot of the content formats are familiar and, and a lot of the content formats like, uh, contain the kinds of content, the kinds of information that they've come to love. So um, we see some sort of habitual behavior on YouTube at, and that often results in a tune-in behavior as well. So the three distinct user behaviors we see on YouTube are users that are actively searching for content. So this could be people looking for self-help videos or how to cook prep, uh, five-step prep meals. Uh, users that are just browsing for new and interesting content, looking for more, um, uh, uh, more videos, more comedy videos, and, and more entertainment videos to, to be able to amuse themselves again in this current climate. Or, or users that go back to their favorite channels and constantly watch the same creator, give them makeup tutorials or give them tutorials on, on on the latest technological trends. So we've so this has revealed a natural framework for us. And this uh, this natural framework results in three different content categories called help, 
Hero and Hub. And what happens here is that we see often hero content is when audiences start to discover new content that they have they've never heard about. Hero content tends to be like big, engaging, shareable moments in your content programming. They often require a lot of investment and a lot of preparation. When let's say hero content could be a group of creators collaborating together to create a huge donation campaign. So hero content always uh, tends to, to revolve around big, engaging, engaging shareable moments. One example of hero content could be the Southeast Asia Games or the Olympics. Um, others could be the kind of hero content that you create yourself, where let's say you create a new viral trend on YouTube. So hub content speaks to the kind of content that uh, kind of recurring video formats that your audiences already love. And this could include things like, uh, um, let's say, recurring TV episodes like The Good Sun or, or regular, uh, reg regular list, list type videos that some of our local creators create. And the regular videos that often do a bit of social commentary where every single week they comment on different social issue. And if that happens to be what your core audiences love and you'll come back every single week to watch a new episode, for example, on last week tonight, or a new episode on, on let's say, a new social issue that we should be concerned about, that also comes back uh, into hub content because this is the kind of regular occurring content that users will love. So some other users also prefer different kinds of hard content, such as Ants Canada, which is a very unique uh, channel that, that talks about the different ways and to, 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 to keep ant farms and, at home. And um, I, initially, I personally was very skeptical about, about watching a video series dedicated to ants, but it's been incredibly addictive for me, where every single week I go back to see a different type of ant, a different species of ant that he's keeping on his channel. So these kinds of content attract users to go back to the channel every single week, and they help to drive recurring users and prevent churn. They prevent users from, uh, they prevent attrition, where, um, where once you're able to capture the audience with your hero content, you'll want to build up a strong base of hub content to retain the user and make sure that user comes back to your channel every single month or every single week. Then, of course, there's also help content where audiences are constantly looking for information such as what are today's uh, the newest numbers on uh, COVID-19 within my market, or I heard there's this new legislation within my market. Can someone uh, give me a video explainer on what it's about? Or sometimes it could be simple things such as, how do I, um, is, there, is there a video, how do I work out at home? Is that the best way to, 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 burn, to burn fat or doing static exercises at home? So all these could go into help content as well. They tend to be very search-based and tend to be very dependent on user interests. So this, all this feeds into like what kinds of like uh, content you want to create because help content speaks to the kinds of questions you can answer for your current and potential fans. Help content speaks to, to giving the same uh, video format to the fans who already love you. And hero content speaks to capturing new audiences who don't already engage with your channel. So these three different pillars help you to capture more audiences. So starting from the left, we help you, uh, this hero content helps you to capture newer audiences. Hub content helps you to retain audiences that already love existing content. And help content helps you engage your, your potential fans and your current fans with the different questions that they're interested in. So sometimes on YouTube, you can even publish polls on your videos through our cards and end screens. We'll go into that later. And that helps you to be able to gain some insight into what your users want to know and what your users are, such, are interested in or searching for. It helps you to be able to deliver help content to address those very questions. All right. So now let's go into uploading best practices 101, where we go beyond just the concepts and we show you the uploading user interface. And we talk about how uh, we, we talk about how at every step of the way, we need to consider titles and descriptions, um, what the best practices are and what you should consider as well. Yeah. Okay. So, but before we go there, I have a pop quiz for everyone. Uh, it's just to make sure that everyone's paying attention. So what I need everyone to do now is to go to www.menti.com and use the code 8798 
zero four. But what you can also do is you can also go to this link that I will paste into our group chat right now. So everyone um, click the link and I'll start this quiz um, in the next one minute. Okay, so I hope everyone's on their mobile phones. Just grab your phone, go to menti.com and enter the code 879804 and vote. Okay, so what happens right now is that every single question has a timer. So I will show the question and um, they will, it will tell you to get ready and to start looking at your phone. And once the question appears, you have 10 seconds to answer the question. The faster you answer the question, the more points you get. So it's a competition, guys. It's a competition to see who's listening, who's not listening. Okay, so we have 100 participants on this quiz right now. And I'm going to start the quiz because I think that should be most of the people here. So if you're not on the Mentimeter, get on the Mentimeter now or else you're going to miss the boat. All right, let's start. Answer fast to get more points. Pick the wrong one. Tell me which one is wrong. Okay, time's up. All right, so 43 of you got it correct. The main value of the brand account is that each user so be it social media at x, xyzcompany.com, each individual corporate account can actually own, let's say up like 10 different brand accounts attached to 10 different channels. So each user can have multiple brand accounts, allowing you to centrally control a lot of your channel access. So this primary owner can assign channel managers to each of your 10 channels and help you do better channel management we can add and remove managers as and when the employees in your company, employees in your team, uh, attrition or join the team. All right, so next question. Okay, so most of you guys got this right. So what most people like to do is you just put all of the most popular uploads at the very top of the channel section. But often what we see um, many of our more successful channels do is that they put topical channel sections right at the top of their channel homepage that covers the latest hero content they're covering or covers the most relevant help content of the week. Or when there isn't a hero content, or help content you want to surface, they just put the favorite video, the most popular video series of that channel up there, and they put out the entire series, entire content category at the top of the channel section. What many of our newer channel managers do is they just put like the most recent uploads and the most popular uploads, but they're not organized topically. So when you organize. So when you organize many of your channel sections in topical fashion, it can attract newer audiences to discover your, the, the kinds of content that you want to, to present to them and allows you to assert like, and, and tell them what this channel is about and what the channel value proposition is. So um, some of you also selected the channel banner to advertise content. Um, so that's, uh, that's, 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 that's still okay. But what uh, we will often want to do is because many of the people come onto YouTube to watch videos and are very engaged in the kinds of video content. So the best answer right, right here is to have a very interesting channel trailer to engage audiences to show them um, what we're going to present in the coming weeks is that we're going to tell you about the latest uh, entertainment news or we're going to show you how to cook like the most uh, delicious um, um, recipes passed over to us uh, from, from, uh, from generations of nonya chefs. So when you have the interesting channel trailer to engage audiences, it's a video format that's native to YouTube and most likely to give you like the best results when it comes to like introducing content to new audiences on your homepage. So your audiences can see, feel, and hear what your channel content is about, 
um, channel trailers are a very good way to engage audiences. All right, last question. All right, so most of you got this correct. So um, the kind, the content type that appeals to your core audience is the hub content. It's the regular content that your audiences already love and return to the channel every single week or every single month just to view um, uh, another episode of the video series they already love. So just to recap, help content is designed to cater to audiences that are searching for information and may appeal to current or potential audiences by answering the questions uh, that they have in, in their heads. Hero content refers to, uh, refers to tempo moments, such as like a massive donation campaign or a winter series or a new sporting event that organically uh, generates a lot of attention and may help you capture new audiences. But what um, a lot of the content that should be on the channel should also be hub content because it's all about being able to develop the audience and be able to deliver more of what your audiences love so that you don't lose the audiences they've already captured um, in the past week or in the past month. So you drive audiences to return to your channel. That's when, uh, that's when you, we see most of our successful channels have a very consistent core of hub content to be able to appeal to, to users and to be able to retain subscribers. All right, so let's look at the leaderboard. Oh no, why am I shake, Eric? Uh, okay, so the fastest, um, you the fastest contestant and user at most points right now is Patch. Congratulations, Patch! I don't really know who you are, but I suspect that was the intent of that nickname. And we'll go back to the presentation. So for you guys who, um. For you guys who want the second chance at this, there's actually a separate quiz after this with five questions. So if you want to beat Sheik Eric or Christina or Patch, um, pay attention to the next few slides. And at the end of that, uh, and at the end of that presentation, you have another chance to regain um, a position in the rankings. All right. So let's continue. So now we'll be going through the upload flow. And so when you, so what you need to do is you need to go to the top right hand corner and click on your account icon and go to YouTube Studio. Or if you're on your channel homepage, there will be a, a, a icon in the top right hand corner that says uh, YouTube Studio. And when you go to YouTube Studio, you'll land on this page where it shows you your channel icon, it'll show you your your latest uploads and your live uploads. So what you need to do is just go to the top right hand corner to the create button and select upload video. So the first thing you'll consider when you're uploading video, a video is your title. So try to keep your title to 60 characters or less so that they show up a lot, easy, uh, a lot more easily in searches. So what, uh, why this is important is because many of your users may be browsing YouTube on their mobile phones instead of using a desktop environment. And when they search for certain topics or they look at your, your channel on, on a mobile device, many of these titles can be trun truncated. So what happens then is that um, you'll want to keep your title within 60 characters because not only does it keep the title short and sweet, it also makes sure that, uh, that audiences can understand the crux of the video. Um, at a glance. So if you have a short title, for example, here we have a title called Keep Customers Informed with Google My Business. The intent and the value of that video is immediately understood. Um, you also want to be able to identify the, the kind of content type. Is it a tutorial? And be able to highlight that within your title just so that uh, audiences understand very clearly what the video is about. So here in this example, we have um, beside the title, we have uh, a, a small tag that says small solves. So it talks about small solutions and, and, uh, and, and workarounds that can help you do better on, on Google My Business as well. So um, if you need, 
if you need um, users to be able to associate your video with a certain series or certain brand, you can also label, you can also title your, your videos that way so that when people are searching for similar videos, they, this, this surface is a lot easier in search. So some of them, um, some of our creators have a video series called Knocking Out. So what they would do is they'll put the main title of the video as uh, today, well, we are we're having a, a e-business competition. So they put the title of that video and they'll put um, a vertical line you can see right here. And they'll put the, the title of that series knocking out just so that anybody that sees that title on the YouTube homepage will automatically have that brand association for the, of a video series seen before. And they say, oh yeah, last week I watched a video series. Uh, I watched a video from this exact video series. And this is a continuation of that series. So how you design your titles helps to helps to increase like a recall from your different audiences and helps um, your audiences to be able to associate um, past video series and to return to those video series. Yeah. Right. So for your so this is what it looks like when you when you first click the upload upload video function. So there's a box there for your title and below there's a box for your descriptions. So what people um, usually think about video descriptions is that they end up just thinking that, oh, this is a keyword game. This is just like any other website. I just need to keep loading it with keywords. So this generally isn't a very good practice because when you load your description with um, irrelevant keywords, it may end up creating a very poor viewing experience. And it may also violate some of our community guidelines against like spam and misleading metadata. So what you essentially don't want to happen is that you, you let's say this video is about a, a cooking show and end up loading it with keywords like technology or end up loading it with keywords with like uh, news or end up lo loading with keywords like um, automobiles. So what you, what you might have is that you have users who, who, who search for certain keywords and end up on your video when it has nothing to do with automobiles or with technology and it's actually just a cooking video. So that kind of experience you create on your video watch page is that the audiences immediately drop off the video within the first five to 10 seconds. And this sends a very negative signal to YouTube that this video is not engaging to audiences. And when, when we surface this video on our YouTube homepage, audiences that click through on that video don't like it. So you don't want to create that kind of search experience that results in YouTube systems and algorithms uh, realizing that we shouldn't recommend your video. You'll want your video to be recommended on the right keywords to the relevant audiences and audiences to actually enjoy the video. And you want your audiences to, to, to be able um, to have relevant uh, keyword experiences. Yeah. So one last thing to highlight here is that your very first line in your video description needs to be a short video specific sentence um, that includes the key features of the video. So think of it as a hook line, like in your digital marketing copy. That first sentence, which will feature most prominently in the search results in your impressions, um, needs to be able to speak to the value of that video, needs to be able to, to, to generate that interest to consume that content. So when the audiences see the title that accurately describes the video and they see the first line in the description that that talks about what that that gives like that helps to pitch what the value of that video is then you end up having a title and description that is very effectively worded to perform well on youtube so on this example here um we are encouraging everyone to use searchable video type video titles and descriptions so here we have a video title that describes very clearly what the video is about. It's about celebrating International Women's Day. It's about um, turning childhood dreams into thriving businesses. And be able to see this on the search result, help audiences understand what the video is um, at, on, on the first glance. And, it will, and helps them to be able to click in into the video and read a little more about what the video is about as they watch the video. So what we have here is an example of some of these videos as well, and these titles that clearly communicate what the video is about. 
And the first line of video description helps to act as a hook line to attract audiences um, to watch more content. So we also have here an example of a video title um, that uses the, the labels to be able to help audiences understand that this is a video series called the 11th hour. And this comes from the MN MSNBC brand. Okay, the next thumbnails. So as much as possible, if you can, upload a custom thumbnail because custom thumbnails go a really long way in helping to ensure that audiences stay interested in your content. Because as audiences glance through the entire YouTube homepage, they may see up to 15 or 20 different titles, thumbnails, and descriptions. And a well-designed thumbnail can really draw attention, the attention of all the audiences out there to that one, to that one video on the YouTube homepage. So on the, on the YouTube homepage, an uh, audience that scrolls through may see 30 different impressions. You want to be that one uh, one video that the user chooses. And the best way to do that is to use that visual element. So on the YouTube interface, we do have suggested thumbnails based off the video footage. And you can actually select the best fit. And many of these thumbnail images are algorithmically recommended to you based off the content in your video. But as much as you can, you should upload custom thumbnails and add them to different playlists so that when the users do click in on a thumbnail, they'll watch more videos on the same playlist and they'll watch more videos from your channel within the very same watch session. So lastly here, um, always remember to indicate whether the video is made for kids. And uh, this is something that you that the team has to decide on whether the, the audience of this particular video is made for kids. And if the video is not targeted at kids, then you can just select it's not made for kids. But if the video is primarily designed to appeal to young audiences, then you have to select that it's made for kids. So we cannot give uh, too much advice on this. And this is something for, for the team to be able to specify on their own. The considerations for building thumbnails. So be able to so, um, um, just be mindful that the play button will overlay on the center of the video. And if you embed the video on, on different websites, the title of video may end up on the bottom half of the thumbnail as well. So ideally, branding should be situated in corners to try and make sure that uh, nothing is obscuring the branding of the thumbnails that you provide to YouTube. So here are some examples of thumbnails that, that, uh, that look really good on YouTube. Tabletized thumbnails are very great, are great for, to, to help you visually differentiate your content. And uh, thumbnails ideally should be high contrast. And what you can see here is that the thumbnails are relatively simple. They have uh, the channel branding at the top right hand corner. There are some simple text overlaying to help speak to audiences on what this video is about. And they provide a high contrast image that will work on both mobile and desktop devices. So some of you may be worried that um, that the comments being made on your, in your YouTube channel may, may end up being offensive or there may be a very, uh, very unhealthy or toxic conversation going on in the YouTube channel comments. So if you want to apply a little bit of content moderation in your video, within the video upload flow, you can also specify if YouTube should hold potentially inappropriate comments for review. Our YouTube algorithm tries to find contents, uh, comments that are potentially inappropriate and we'll hold them for review so that your, your video managers and channel managers can review them before rejecting and allowing them on the YouTube video. You can also uh, turn on a setting that holds all comments on review, for review. So if you have, let's say you have a team on standby, that a uh, team of channel managers that's able to review these comments very regularly, you can always choose to hold all comments for review. So of course there are other things such as you can simply decide to allow all comments on your YouTube channels or turn off comments on YouTube channels. Okay. So if your channel has been enabled for monetization, channel managers also have the option to set default ad formats against the channel for studio uploads. And you can check your default ad settings um, on, your, on YouTube studio as well. So, what you can do is can decide that you want overlay ads to, to appear at the bottom of your video. Um, you want to enable non-skippable ads as a before the video starts 
or whether you want to enable only skippable ads before the video starts. What you can also do if your video is longer than 10 minutes, you can, uh, what you can do is you can also insert an ad break in the middle of your video. So let's say if your video is 15 minutes long, at the eight minute mark, you can choose to insert a mid-row ad where the viewers, where the audiences may watch a non-skippable ad or a skippable ad before continuing to watch the rest of the content. Okay, end screens. So end screens are part of the video that will show within the last five to 20 seconds of your video content. So this is an opt-in. You can add up to four different elements to promote your own content, your, or your, your partner channels or your sister channels, and your associated websites that um, across your video screen. So what you can pick between is that you can pick between different videos or playlists that you want to showcase. So let's say you've uploaded a five minute video that's a teaser to a longer video series that's 30 minutes long per episode. So at the end of your video in the last 10 seconds, you can insert an end screen that shows like a playlist of the video series that, the, that this five minute video teases about. Or you can also allow video, uh, YouTube to select a video from your channel that best fits that particular audience. So if let's say you're not inserting a specific playlist or you don't have the, the time and effort to say, of all the 100 videos I upload today, I want to pick this video with this playlist, this video with this other video, you can simply allow YouTube to select the best fit video from your channel to recommend to audiences in your end screen. What you can also do on your end screen is you can put in the channel icon and subscribe button to encourage more subscriptions on your channel. And if you have linked your YouTube channel to your own website, and you, let's say you have an official website, you can link many of your videos to your associated website to get people to watch or to read more content on your blogs or to look at, to watch more content on, 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 on your official site. Or lastly, if, you have, if this particular video is a collaboration with another channel, you can also use the end screens to promote another channel and provide a custom message. So what we did very recently was we rolled out an update to make the end screen experience native to YouTube. So um, in the past, you could only go back post upload to edit and add end screens into the video. But today, you can add end screens within the upload flow itself that allows you to choose from pre-existing templates that, that show one channel icon and two videos, one channel icon and one playlist. Um, what you can also do is you can also import an end screen they have previously designed for your other video series, or you can use the editor to add the individual elements yourselves. So apart from end screens, we also have cards. So end screens are called end screens because they only appear at the end of the video as an additional section after the video is entered. But cards are pre-formatted notifications that can pop up on the top right-hand corner um, of your video, even at the seven minute mark of a 10 minute video. So um, let's say if you're midway through your video content and you're, talk and you're trying to engage with the audience, you're trying to tell the audience, um, let me know, um, let me know what, uh, let's say you're, you're having a video series that talks about like the different kinds of nonia dishes and how to cook them. So, and the, and, the, and the creator within the video wants to engage the audience and say, do you think I should create, I should demonstrate laksa next? Or do you think I should demonstrate Nasila Mark next? So at that particular point of the video, you can trigger a card that pops up. That's a poll card that allows audiences to vote whether they want to, they want to see a Laksa video next or a Nasila Mark video next. So this allows audi audiences to interact and engage um, with the video. And stronger en engagement is generally correlated with, uh, with, with, more with, with lower audience attrition and audiences that are more engaged tend to come back to your channel for more content. So how this looks like, so I have a very simple video here where it shows you how you can add and decide at which timestamp you want to insert, insert a card. And top right corner, there's a card, there's a card poll that simply asks whether I should make more cat videos. So this is what the cards and nine screen, the, the cards experience looks like when you decide to add a card and it can pop up on the top right-hand corner to allow audiences to engage um, with that poll of that video content. Right. So we've covered this. You can, in your cards, 
um, within the studio editor, you can insert a, a card that showcases more videos or more playlists to watch. You can link to, a, to a, another channel that's collaborated with you on that particular video. You can insert poll cards and you can insert link cards to link out your associated site for users to let's say shop for your own unique merchandise or to learn more about your brand. Finally, reviewing your work. Uh, make sure all changes are safe and make sure that when just before you publish a video, if let's say you want the video to only be published at 7 p.m. because you have noticed on YouTube analytics when your video is published at 7 p.m., you get the most impressions, the most click-throughs, and the most user watch time. So if you need to make further edits, um, you can always set the video as unlisted or private and publish it later. And you can, pub you can aim to and try to have a very consistent uploading schedule so that audiences know when to expect your content, for example, every Tuesday night or every Monday night at 9 p.m. This particular video series and this explainer series will appear. Um, try also spacing out videos instead of pu publishing five videos at once, uh, just to ensure that audiences at different times of the day um, will engage with your videos. And just so that you have a point of reference to check during, uh, in YouTube analytics on which videos perform well at which timestamps. Some videos perform well at 7 p.m., some videos perform well at 11 p.m., some videos will perform well at 10 a.m. So this leads on to my next section. On YouTube Analytics, we will have impressions metric to show how many times a video thumbnails, title, and description are shown on YouTube. Whether they're shown on watch next, on the, on the vertical bar that's right next to the video watch page that shows you about which videos you can select as the next video to watch. It could be impressions on the home page, or they could be impressions on the subscriber tab, where audiences go back to the subscriber tab to select the video from their favorite channels. So there's also click through rate that shows you out of a hundred times the thumbnail is being shown, how many times did the viewer decide to click on your particular thumbnail? So the click through rate percentage here is 5.4%. That's relatively normal and shows what percentage of your impressions on YouTube turn into views. So we also have a watch time metric that shows not only did they click on that video, how long did they watch the video for? Was the watch time um, like, was the watch time for like, uh, 3 million hours out of 11 million views, or was the watch time 100 million hours out of 11 million views? And traffic sources. So this traffic sources report is particularly useful. It lets you know where audiences uh, came from and how did they discover your content. So browse features refer to when audiences have discovered your, your content, discovered your thumbnails on the YouTube homepage, suggested videos, um, tell you that the audiences discovered your video as part of YouTube's algorithm, recommending them to watch uh, this video as the next, re recommending them that this is the next video to watch. So at the side panel, whenever you watch a YouTube video, when you go home, you watch a YouTube video, um, I take, take note of all the videos that are at the side. Those are the videos. Um, those are the suggested videos that YouTube gives you as a watch next suggestion. And if let's say an audience has decided to watch a video um, as the next, after they've done watching the first video, then this comes in as suggested videos as a traffic source. Right. So um, use YouTube analytics to try and understand where your audiences come from. But more importantly, uh, remember to integrate your channel into your website, social media pages, and even your EDMs to try and get your video in front of interested viewers. This is very important for video, uh, for channels that are also just starting out, where they may not always have the audience uh, and, all, and, and, the, and the user traffic, and be able to encourage continued interaction with your brand, to integrate your, to integrate your channel with um, other, other traffic sources, other streams of, uh, of, so of digital traffic, and helping to spread your story through word of mouth is, is very vital to getting a new YouTube channel launched. So it's quiz time again. Um, Pablo, do we want to skip to the Q&A instead of going to the quiz? I think that's just yeah. very quickly go to yeah. Q&A. Yeah. So key takeaways, know your audience. 
take inspiration from successful cat, uh, creators in your category, optimize for discovery, make sure your video is eye-catching and encourage uh, audiences to take action watching your video on YouTube, and review your work, edit, schedule, and publish your, your, your videos, and use YouTube analytics to derive insights on poor performing videos against the videos that do well. So other features uh, to engage your users include community posts, translation tools, um, we can provide custom subtitles to your videos, especially for audiences that may not consume content in English. If let's say anticipate your audiences to come from like a Chinese market or a Bahasa or a markets where they speak in Bahasa, you can, you can opt to include some of these custom subtitles for them so that you can engage um, uh, and grow a more inter international audience for your videos. We'll cover live streams later this week. So if you want to, if you want to get into live streams, please make sure to attend our Thursday session as well, conducted by Tianwen. And if you're comfortable with pre-recording your event, you can always upload a normal YouTube video as premieres, as a premiere video as well. This will be covered this Thursday. Right. So here are some other useful resources. And let's move to Q&A. Hi, Eric. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. So actually, I've been compiling all of the questions you guys have been chatting in the, the, the window. So first question is from Alan Santos. Um, so, so I think he means, um, what should be the maximum length of the video that should be uploaded? What's the ideal upload length? OK, so we actually do get this question quite often. And the, there's no short answer to this. But we have seen what the most important metric to any video upload is the viewer retention on that video. So let's say if you upload a video that's 30 minutes long, but you're losing audiences within the first three minutes, so the first five minutes, then that video that's 30 minutes long is not likely to perform because the watch time on, on that particular video in that view session is only three minutes. So you need to be able to optimize and balance between video length and viewer retention. And if you can publish more videos um, that are 30 minutes long, and you can see that most of your audiences are engaged to the 20 or 25 minute mark, and that's a signal that a particular video series at a uh, that are 30 minutes long works for you on your YouTube channel. For some YouTube channels, um, only shorter form video formats work. And there's a trade-off if you were um, between five minute videos and 20 minute videos, um, your videos tend to perform and your channel tends to perform a lot better when the viewer retention on that video is maximized to about 70% of the videos um, being, 70% of the view, of the viewers watch through to about 80% of the video. Um, okay, uh, let's move on to the next question, which I think um, we're not gonna go in the order of questions because we don't have time, but more of a frequently asked question format. So Valerie Ng has asked, some of our YouTube videos are not being monetized fully, even though the videos met the guidelines. Why is that so? So, the videos. So it really depends on um, what the nature of this question is. I so I think what Valerie is trying to ask here is about the yellow icons. So we do have a YouTube help center that goes through all the different ad policy guidelines and whether the videos meet those ad policy guidelines and whether they're suitable for advertisers to do general advertising on. So what happens here is that because most advertisers use auction ads and they don't directly opt in into, what, into serving the ad on your video and on your channel, they only opt in serving ad against this particular audience and this particular content category, we need to ensure that most of the videos in that bucket are safe for most brands, that are safe even for shampoo brand or brand that's, that's selling baby products. So if you gone through the YouTube uh, ad, Ad friendly guidelines and advertiser guidelines, and you're very certain that your videos do meet those ad policy guidelines, you can reach out to YouTube support or you can appeal that that um, you can appeal the yellow icon within YouTube Studio itself. 
Right. So when you appeal that, then we will have a human reviewer that specifically reviews your viewer content. And if that's the human reviewer has assessed your video and says, okay, you know what? Actually, that's actually what, what the partner is saying is true. The video does need advertiser friendly guidelines. The human reviewer will help them re-monetize your video. Um, we've got some really consistent questions over here um, around, I'm just starting a channel. Um, what is the fastest way for me to grow this new channel? And how can I get my get the YouTube algorithm to push my content and promote it? So the fastest way to grow your channel is to try and encourage uh, different entry points to your video. So as we were going towards the end of the presentation, I mentioned about how it's actually quite crucial to be able to integrate your channel across many of your different social media platforms. That's because you want to be able to create as many entry points to introduce as many new audiences to your channel as possible. So when we can establish a trend that a certain kind of audience or a certain audience segment really loves your content and they will come back to watch your content, uh, then YouTube as a system understands that this channel needs to be promoted because viewers that watch videos on that channel um, tend to watch longer on YouTube. They tend to, to watch all the way through. They don't drop off within the first 30, uh, the first 30 seconds of that video. And what's also really important is for you to be able to use YouTube analytics to understand which video series perform and which video series don't perform. So you can use YouTube analytics to understand which videos tend to be promoted on YouTube algorithms by the traffic sources report. You can look at the video level analytics to see if the video retention, if the, the video retention is high, if most audiences tend to watch through to 80% of your video or if they tend to drop off within the first 20% of the video. So trying to replicate video formats that work, trying to re uh, reproduce more content that users love, helps you to grow your audience base and helps you to grow your, uh, to drive returning audiences to your channel. And that's a kind of positive association you want your channel to have. So uh, channels like that, that can demonstrate that, that sort of trend tend to grow very quickly and tend to build, um, tend to attract more audiences and build on those audiences and tend to expand on the size of the audience that continually returns to their channel. So take note of what we, 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 we talked about just now on the hero hub help content. Try to make sure that there's a healthy core of hub content that helps to retain your audiences and take note of the different ways in which you can attract new audiences through hero and help content as well. Um, Eric, for the sake of time, um, we're five minutes over time. Uh, maybe we can do the feedback sharing. And then um, for those of you who are in this call, we have another session coming up this Thursday. Uh, we do have to dial off now, um, but please go to the link shared in the chat to mark your attendance and give us feedback. And a round of applause for Eric, who has been a wonderful instructor for today. Um, and we hope to see many of you in the more advanced sessions going forward. This is our second week, which has been a very beginner focused class, but we will have more intermediate and advanced courses coming soon. But please make sure to give us feedback and mark your attendance so we can keep track of your progress. Thank you, everyone.